doing this the whole time, and nobody, that's going to be very distracting. <laughs> so I'm going to sit. Um, So I'm going to start with the obligatory, um, here are my people slide. Um, so these are kind of the people in my life that have made a really big difference. First is my mom and dad. They're super goofy and fun and athletic. They're going to an obstacle course boot training camp tomorrow. For those of you who know they're super into obstacle course racing. Um, and they're also definitely going to be watching this afterwards. So you can all say hi to my parents. Um, Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> um, but anyways, another member of my family is Hevel. Um, he's kind of the 120 mascot. We've seen his little fluffy buns running around. Um, and then also uh, some people that aren't part of CBF but have been a really big part of my college career is Steph and George. They're in the corner right over there. And they were my floor freshman year, and I've gotten to know them really well. Um, they've really shaped and changed me. We all changed each other. Um, throughout college. And then, of course, all the CBF for seniors, I have us all in that picture right there. Um, and pretty much out of freshman year out of the gate, I met four other girls from CBF that I now live with. Um, and living with them all has been a really good chance for to have soulful friendship um, and to also live with other Christians to really grow my faith. And then, last but not least, um, I started getting close to one particular senior. Um, about last year's time, and I'm also thankful for God leading us to each other through CBF. Um, so, this program was made possible with these congregations and viewers like you. <laughs> um, so, if you guessed from the um, the last song, which was called Seasons, or maybe that I told Emma that my theme was the Seasons, and then she put different seasons on each of the worship backgrounds, um, I'm talking about seasons of faith. Um, so um, this is the way that God has really taught me about his earth and his kingdom um, through seasons in my life. So getting into it, a lot of times we talk about Ecclesiastes, and whenever we talk about seasons, we use the verse, there's a time for everything. Um, and it's this really beautiful prose, I'm sure many of you have heard it, we'll read it in a second. But a lot of times we skip over the context of this prose and we just talk about the beautiful poetry instead of um, the part of Solomon's, what he's writing about as well. So I'll explain the context just a little bit. Um, Ecclesiastes is written by Solomon. And as you read the book, um, you might get the impression that Solomon had a really grave outlook on life. life. Um, he starts with the declaration in chapter 1, verse 1, that everything is meaningless. Um, and he's seen the ups and downs of life, and he just can't quite make sense of it. And so he asks questions like, why is there so much suffering? Um, where is God in the midst of life? And what, he, what is the meaning of the mundane days that we live in? Um, he reflects on the understanding of God and how this fits in with the life he's experiencing, um, and it doesn't quite line up. And we might ask ourselves these same questions. We do. It's not just a part of being Christian, but a part of being human. Um, and so then we get to um, the part of the class, the Ecclesiastes, that Solomon kind of gets down to. And that's that everything is striving after um, the wind. So it's kind of this ultimate chase being on this earth. You're chasing after something all the time. So um, first he talks about striving, striving after riches and how riches can end in a second and striving after our work and um, our positions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and even talks about striving after wisdom, which is Solomon's, kind of his thing as well. But ultimately it just breaks down to everything is striving after the wind. As some of you were at retreat last weekend, um, we, we, talk, we talked about what is eternal um, and what is worldly and what is worldly is striving after the wind. Um, but it doesn't have to be like that. Um, we also find God's presence in life, and where God's presence is, that's where our meaning will emerge. Um, so a life lived with God and an acknowledgement of his divine presence is rooted rather than falling after the wind. We have sturdiness and we have fruitfulness. 
rather than um, being blown over by the wind. But the wind is still part of our lives because we're here on this earth right now. And so um, I want to get into the beautiful poetry part of Ecclesiastes now. Um, does anybody want to read this? Okay. Um, there is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every matter under heaven, a time to give birth and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to shun embracing, a time to search and a time to give up as lost, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. Thanks, Kate. Um, so here Solomon affirms the seasons of joy and the seasons of hardship. Um, we can just see the ebb and flow that he goes through, um, but when we keep God at the center, purpose will emerge and will redefine all of these seasons. So our first lesson from verse 1 um, is that God created seasons both physical and spiritual. So just as we have these seasons in the world where we're talking about um, we're in New England, so we, all, we, we get four seasons. Um, he has plans for our spiritual growth and our change as well. <coughs> so now I'm getting into a little bit more of what he's saying. Um, does anybody want to read this section right here? I've seen the task which God has given the sons of mankind with which to occupy themselves. He has made everything appropriate in its time. He has also set eternity in their heart without the possibility that mankind will find out the work which God has done from the beginning, even to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to rejoice and to do good in one's lifetime. Moreover, that every person who eats and drinks sees good in all his labor. This is the gift of God. I know that everything God does will remain forever. There is nothing to add to it, and there is nothing to take from it. So we get out of this, um, kind of three verses out of this and the verse reference is to the side um, but the first one is that every single season is hard work um, we all know this that there's labor in every season and there's tasks with which to occupy ourselves um, so we can never expect a part of our life where we can kind of lean back and be like oh I made it to the good season no there's always different things that God has planned for you in each season um, the next is that every season is a gift. Um, so in this one, we, we see his creative power, and we see that every single season, no matter what, um, will be on his timetable, and he's given that to us. And then finally, that God's consistency is the constant in our change. So even though we're always changing, and we're always ebbing and flowing, um, God is always going to be the same. And we can see that in the way that he loves and cares for us in every single season. And he wants to take us by his side and walk with us. So it's a little bit of biblical context of seasons. Um, there are so many accounts. And um, by Solomon's time, um, he, we have the seasons of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob um, and Esther. And we see that they have these highs and lows as well. Um, and that is just from the beginning. We have the Old Testament. Genesis, where as long as the earth endures, sea time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night, will never cease. So that's kind of what seasons are, are meant to be. Um, and then we have in, in Job here, oh, he's the, oh, whoa. <laughs> the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be um, So Job has gone through, of course, the highest of seasons and the lowest of seasons. And we can see that he is saying that um, that second kind of thing we got at that every single season is a gift. Um, next, we have Paul in Philippians. I know what it is to be me, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, 
whether well fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Um, and then finally, in Jesus' own words, it is not for you to know the time or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority. So even though we have these seasons, we're not always going to be in the know. Even in real life, we have those random frosts that come up, or we have those random hot days. Um, and although we have weathermen and timetables, our spiritual lives aren't quite like that. We can predict things, but God ultimately has his plan. And so we, we will never know how long our seasons really last. And we just have to live in it, labor in it, and love it. Another thing is that um, seasons are a part of life that we've really, um, we've lost in kind of our modern era, especially in biblical times. It was very critical that people lived by the season. So everything changed, um, whether it was the, the food that they ate, um, the drink, where you could travel, um, what kind of uh, what kind of work you were doing. And so in most cultures, um, even into the present, this is a big part of how you live. And so I think that we take for granted having this modern life. We can eat apple any time of year we want. Um, we take for granted how it is to live season by season. And for me, even though I'm living in that modern time, I also kind of experience a little bit of that seasonal too. Um, so my seasons can be very, very literal. Um, I have a little something called seasonal affective disorder, and so that's characterized by, um, in the winter, you can see things are just, things are down. Um, I can be, I can have a different outlook on life and a different perspective, and things can just not be looking up. God has this regular trial for me. Um, but it's not all bad when people talk about seasonal affective disorder. It's literally called sad, so people just assume that you're sad all the time. But there's also like this really great side of it that nobody really talks about. And that's like during the summer is this like anti-depression and this filled with God's love. And I get so excited about the world and the task that he has for us. Um, and oftentimes, like even talking about this, I only talk about the bad part of it, but I don't talk enough about the good part. And that's one of the things is that I let my season define who I am. Um, so I've struggled with that, especially throughout college, beginning to recognize my seasons. And so as, as I kind of was going through college, instead of letting my, my seasons define who I am, I kind of flipped it and I wanted to instead define my own seasons. Um, so I have kind of what I've come up with as um, spring, summer, winter, and fall. And as our speaker would say, talking about the stars, none of this is thus saith the Lord, but it's helped me identify my journey, my walk with God, and it's helped, um, it's helped, it's really helped me draw closer. So I'm gonna go into each season a little bit. I'm gonna talk a little bit about each one. Um, what I, what I kind of associate with what each one, um, maybe some of my favorite verses, and then particularly some spiritual disciplines that have helped me in that season. So because we're at WPI, and I've been a student my entire life, the, the year starts with fall. Uh, <laughs> so I started with autumn. And this one I really attribute to um, letting go, your pruning, so you're releasing something. So in fall, this can be um, releasing a burden. So you have um, maybe a sin that you recognize in yourself that um, just is of the world and needs to be released. Or um, a big one that I attribute is to COVID. When we went into lockdown, we were just shedding ourselves of going outside and getting to see people um, and doing all these things. So we're letting go and we're coming back to God. It's really, um, it's also, a big part of Christianity is death. It's a death to ourselves, um, and it's the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. And so God is the only one that can make death beautiful. So leaning into that season of fall, I picked out three um, of my spiritual disciplines that have helped me through fall. And the first one is reflection. Um, so this one is, uh, I picked out Colossians 3. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you put off the old self with its practices, and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of the Creator. So 
this one we're kind of reflecting and talking about images, we're coming back to what should our lives look like and what does God look like. I really like how this, um, we went over some part this weekend where it wasn't like we're getting rid of sinliness, but we're going back to godliness. That's the goal. And that's kind of what I pictured with reflection here. Another one is um, repentance. So we have many parts in the Bible. Uh, repent and do the things you first did. And I really like this one because um, we're coming back to, like, in fall, we're coming back to that original season. And so you're going back. It's doing the things you first did as a Christian when you had this first um, death of yourself and come to the Lord. Um, and then finally, the sacrifice. Uh, Romans 2.12, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Um, and then winter. So winter is the next season. And this one I really attribute to silence, loss. You don't get to see like this, this beautiful scenery around you. I mean, it can be beautiful, but you're losing kind of the life, and instead it's, you're waiting for spring to happen. Um, and I attribute it to trials as well, just because I've had my trials in winter. Um, and so the first one, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart, and wait for the Lord. Um, the second one is constant prayer, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, giving thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. Um, and I think that this the season where God knows that our heads are constantly spinning with these with these um, the trials that really take over our brains. And so having a constant prayer and a, like even so little in the middle of your tasks, um, knowing that you need to be in in this prayer with God. And then finally is soulful friendship. Um, in Ecclesiastes, this is just a small part of the verse, but it's a really um, really sweet verse where it talks about two are better than one. So I have two are better than one because they have good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. And so when we're in um, when we're in friendships, any friendship, we're going to know that one person is up and one person is down. But when you're in a Christian friendship, um, someone that you can really become close to and have um, a soulful connection with, you're able to help each other in a way that you might not be able to otherwise um, understand and encourage about something internal. And so I think it's been really important that um, the people I mentioned in my first slide, that you grow close to those people rather than um, you know, isolating yourself from your fellowship and your community, because then you will isolate yourself from God as well. And this one, um, James 1, is just my favorite verse about trials and temptations. Um, this is actually, my mom has always said this verse to me ever since I was going through, you know, tiny little baby trials, um, and up to now, but consider it pure, oh, does someone else want to read this? I feel like I've been talking a lot. Trevor. Consider it pure, blah, blah, blah. consider it pure joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Blessed is a man who perseveres under trial, for once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Thanks, Trevor. Um, so this one, my mom has always been trying to reshape my perspective from trials from the beginning. Um, so it's not just uh, seek joy, but it's consider it pure joy, which is a very different way from the way that we want to think about trials, so the way God wants us to think about these trials. Um, endurance having its perfect result, and blessed is a man who perseveres under trial. Uh, so this was just my favorite verse about winter, and I, it's one of my favorite verses in general, so I just had to include it here. Next week's spring. Happy first week of spring, everybody. Anna sent, Anna sent me pictures of flowers today, which was amazing. There are flowers on campus. Go check them out. <laughs> um, so clearly I'm excited about spring. I also feel like I'm in spring right now because I'm kind of like defrosting from the winter. Um, but I attribute this season with growth and deeper roots. 
um, you're transitioning in your life. So this could be something that's a really big change, like a freshman coming into college, um, for all of us seniors who are graduating in five weeks, uh, you're at a new job, you're in a new location, it's something that's stretching you out. God is stretching you outside of your comfort zone, and he's putting you in a new place. Um, but this also means you have renewed life, um, and you have, you're sowing seeds of change, really God's sowing seeds of change through you. Um, and I think that when we have a new circumstance and a new transition in our life, this is the best chance to get back into um, the gospel specifically and reading and studying Jesus's, um, Jesus' life on earth. Uh, so every word of God is flawless. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words what he will you and prove you a liar. I think it's really important that we also read and study when we're in the spring and we have, we have a new perspective. Um, for our future seasons, because spring won't last forever, none of these seasons will last forever, and um, you'll be able to get a new perspective when you read. Another thing is memorization. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you, uh, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in hearts to God. Colossians 3. Um, during the other seasons, specifically with me, I noticed my brain is more like buzzy and like um, But when you're in spring, you have this you have this like excitement more for getting into the word again and, and learning more. And so this is the perfect opportunity for you to really memorize those verses and have them in the back of your head for those other seasons when um, God is there, but your your brain is a little more a little more messy. Um, so I really take those. And then finally is guidance. Um, Hebrews 10 has, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Um, another thing about transitions and change and spring is that people have all pretty much been through your circumstances before. And so leaning on your mentors and those in your life who um, have really helped you in the Christian faith and have been through this. Um, chances are your mentors have gone through a lot of the things that you've done. And so leaning on them and they're going to be able to show God's word into your life um, of parts that uh, you don't know where it's quite applicable yet. They know the lessons that God has taught them. And then finally is summer. Uh, I chose this slide because this slide set this summer because it's the fruits. And I believe that summer is you're kind of like harvesting the fruits of the spirit that you've been growing throughout your other seasons. It's this harvest, it's this productivity, like everything's coming at once, um, mature growth. But as, uh, the thing about harvest and summer is that when it's summertime, it's a lot of your, uh, when you're a farmer at least, <laughs> it's a lot of your time and energy and your strength you're out in the field and you're taking these things and you're not hoarding everything for yourself um, it's it's giving back and so uh, the first one is service one Peter says as each has received a gift use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace in order that everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ um, so this one this verse is talking about spiritual gifts but really if you, if you look at it in it, any gift is to give back to the Lord. Throughout the Bible, there says gifts are to get given back to the Lord and back to the community around you. Um, so when you have all these fruits of the Spirit and coming in, this isn't a time to be like, oh, it's summer. I mean, things are good. See y'all in winter, but I'm not feeling great again. Um, but instead, it's kind of giving back. Um, giving, of course. One Timothy has command, specifically the wealthy, do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age, so that they may hold of the life that is truly life. And then finally, I feel like I threw in a lot of verses, so I give you all a break this verse. Um, celebration, I think it's most important in the summer, um, specifically getting back to those older seasons. People are always having these wonderful celebrations. Um, and instead, we just kind of have like this year life, modern, 
where it's like, oh, we're just waiting until the next holiday and the next holiday, but instead taking that summer to really celebrate um, instead of striving after the win with our summers. Um, and I think that celebration, it's the best time to read the songs because you're really feeling it. You can shout them out and be excited. And uh, the final thing I wanted to say is just about the applications of these. Um, this is really what's helped me. Um, of course, seasons are never quite like cut and dry. It can be multiple at once. Um, but it's just what's helped me with my seasons. The first one is recognizing and assessing my season, knowing where I am. Um, and then finding the spiritual disciplines that work best for you in your season. You should be reading the Bible all the time. You should be praying all the time. You should be doing your spiritual disciplines all the time. But God has these seasons for us where we are very strong in one thing and, and maybe not quite so in another. And so recognizing what you are strong in and can store up for a later season. Um, and then preparing for future seasons, um, just kind of tying in with the last one. And then finally reflecting on past seasons because the seasons, they're gonna happen over and over again. They're not just gonna be like, oh, that was my last spring, great. Um, but instead, we can't grow without every single season. So in between every single stage of growth, we have all four of these events. And so that's, that was kind of the conclusion. Um, thank you all for staying with me. I'm going to have a little bit of time now where I read Ecclesiastes, um, the, the poem again. And I want you all to close your eyes. And I'm going to read it. And I hope that you all have a little bit of time to reflect with God in what season you are because we're going to be talking about that in discussion. So let me pull out my verse. You can all close your eyes and meditate on that. I'll lead us in prayer. And then we'll go off into discussion groups. <laughs> there is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every matter under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Dear God, thank you for being with us in this room tonight as we dive a little more into your word. I ask that you meet with every single person in this room and walk with them in whatever season they are in. Help them to recognize that this is just a season and that what is not a season is your eternal love and joy for us. I ask that for those of us in winter, you may be encouraged that trials will help us grow and that you show people the light at the end of the tunnel. Help them know that this is the time where you are closest to them. For those of us in fall, help us to uh, let go of these parts of us that are not worshiping you. Help us to have freedom and um, you fully embrace that, that uh, freedom that you've given us. For those of us in spring, I pray that you give us excitement and perseverance to study your word in new and encouraging ways encourage us to keep making new changes, um, to learn more about you, and to learn more about the people around us. And finally, for those of us in summer, help us to remember that your gifts are from you. They're not something that has been done by our work, but by your hand. Help us to give back to those around us and encourage those who are in those other seasons. I pray that you be with everyone this week tonight us to have fruitful discussion as we close our night. And all this I ask in your name. Amen. So